Our God is our healer. Amen. We were, uh, Pastor Barbara was talking to me as we were looking around tonight. She's talking about uh, Jonathan was just in his mother's arms when he started coming to this church. In his mother's arms. Been in this ministry all these years. And Tiffany was born in this church. Stephanie was born in this church. Paul was born. No. <laughs> Paul's been in the backup singers for over 25 years, I guess, around that time. Some long. He's only he's only 26 years old. You know? <laughs> and Raphael, he's 89 years old when he started coming. Now he's 75 years old. So, uh, but these, these kids, we're so proud how they just stayed with the ministry, grew up and involved in ministry and singing and, and all the other aspects of ministry and mission work and just all kind of great things. And we appreciate all the other singers that's been here for a while and, and band members. Thank you so much, doing a great job. But we're just excited to look around. Florida, you've been back here. You've been with me forever too. Florida back in the sound booth back there. Alan, well, I can go keep going. We got 25, 20, 30 years. Alan been me 30 years, praise God. But it's awesome to see all these people been us with so long, especially seeing these kids born in this church and staying in the church and getting involved in the church. What a way to go. Amen. Hallelujah. So that just proves that, amen, that they deserve it. That just shows you that if you'll get your kids in here and keep, keep make them stay faithful, and these kids were faithful. Their parents made them stay faithful, even when they didn't want to come to church, which I doubt that ever happened. <laughs> but they were here anyway, praise the Lord. But uh, then they just grew up in here and they just love doing what they're doing. We just love them. Thank you so much. God bless you. We love you. Praise God. One more big hand for them tonight. Amen. Remain standing tonight. Get your Bible tonight. Let's uh, have uh, our confession and believe God with all your heart that your uh, words uh, hook up with your heart and uh, the word of God will work. Amen. Amen. Say tonight, tonight, I will be taught the uncompromised, the unchanging, the infallible, indestructible seed of the word of the living God. I am what the word says I am. I can do what the word says I can do. I can have what the word says I can have. For my Bible is God's word speaking to me. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, the Bible is God's word speaking to you. So be a doer of the word, not just to hear the word. Smile real big. Oh, go ahead, smile real big. You look better that way. Wait to wear around. Hug two people before you sit down. Hug two people. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. Glory. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anybody stay up late last night and watch the basketball game besides me? I'm ready for a nap right now. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Praise the Lord. But that was something. I don't know who you were pulling for, but both teams are awesome. And that was just an incredible ball game last night. And it was highs and lows and highs and lows. And, and it just praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, I like both teams. I really like both of them, but I am pulling for the heat. And I do like San Antonio, too. Really, because I like one of the guys, uh, uh, Danny Green from North Carolina, because I'm a Carolina guy, too, you know. So I like him. He, he's had incredible three-point shooting expos, uh, expos. But it's just been incredible to uh, see that happening. That's very rare see those kind of things happening. So we're witnesses to those things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So the tomorrow night's the big game. Yeah, Amen. Winner takes all tomorrow night. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> My wife says, time to get in the word, Pastor. Time to get in the word. <laughs> I'm loosening up. I'm loosening up getting ready to work. I'm getting, getting loose up. Then. Oh, we come to church to have fun, don't we? Come to have fun. Come to... Receive the word of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, whatever you need, reach out by faith and take it tonight. Thank God he's no respecter of persons. He is the El Shaddai, 
but God, that is more than enough tonight. Amen? Turn your Bibles to Philippians 4, 19. Our text for our subject we've been talking and sharing for about two, three lessons now. This is our fourth lesson, I believe, on the cure for lack, the cure for lack. And we've been talking about this. And then, uh, and then Philippians 4, 19 says, my God shall supply, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. So as a child of God, we never need to uh, be worried with things in life. Uh, we don't need to let things in this world trouble us because we know who our source is. God is our source. We don't look to uh, the world. We look to God. Uh, again, Romans 12, 2 says, Be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. you got to get your mind saved to the Word of God by reading and studying the Bible to find out what you have on the inside of you. So in John 8, 36 says, we we're reviewing a little bit, tells us this, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. Amen? You shall be free indeed. Because Jesus has set us free, we are to live free from fear, sickness, disease, or failure, free from anything uh, this world has to throw at us. Anything Satan can throw at us, we are free from that. Because Jesus has made us free. Amen. And then we find out in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19, uh, uh, this sets the stage of what his ministry is all about. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Praise God. This is his job description. This is his job. That's what he's here for is to set the captives free, preach the gospel to the poor. Why does he want to preach the gospel to the poor? So they don't have to be poor no more. Amen. Not only poor in the natural, but poor in spiritually speaking. But he, he sets you free in both areas. He sets you free in your spirit when you get born again. When you get born again, he sets you free in the natural. Amen. Amen. Thank God I don't have to depend on the world for my needs to be met. Amen. I depend on the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now, in the financial arena, the gospel is always the cure for lack. I said the gospel is the cure for lack. Many who are in financial difficulty think that money is their cure for lack and that their need is more money. You don't need more money, but according to the word of God, their need is more gospel. You need more gospel. So if you have lack, you need more gospel. You know, uh, your jobs, your paychecks, your income, and uh, uh, you know, you can have all these things going and depending on the world for your security. But if you lose your job, Amen. if you lose that paycheck, Amen. and if you don't know who your source is, you're going to suffer in life. Amen. Even though the world may lay you off, you may lose your job for whatever reason. It matters not because God, you are God's child. And if you've been obedient to the word of God, see, there's a stipulation there's a stipulation. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Yes. You cannot haphazardly obey God. Yes. Uh, you can't haphazardly obey God. See, uh, we may not be under the law of the Old Testament, but there's still a law, and we give you those four laws, the law of faith, the royal law of love, the law of the spirit of life, and the law of sowing and reaping. We find in Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, there's always going to be seed time and harvest. Yes. You can't have a harvest without a seed. And then in Galatians chapter 6 talks about you reap what you sow. And so this is, this is the law of God. This is the word of God. And if God says it, it will come to pass if we we'll hook up to his word. We've got to hook up with his good word. Again, F. Well, Boswell said this, it is impossible to boldly claim by faith a blessing you're not sure God is offering. If you're not sure what God is offering, you can't claim that. You've got to know what God's offering. You've got to understand the benefits that God has for you. You get your job, they hand you a little handbook, uh, uh, gives you the benefits of what that employment will do for you there. First thing you do when you get home, you don't throw it in the trash. You want to see how many vacation days you got. 
You want to see them in sick days you got coming. You want to check it out and check on your insurance. I mean, you go through and look at all the benefits and see people get saved. You need to find out now what your benefits are by getting into the word of God. You want to know what God has to offer you, get into the word. Get into the word of God and find out what the benefits are. Amen. See, Hosea again says we are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Lot. Speak to me. We are destroyed for lack of Lot. not for a lack of money. Right. We're not destroyed for lack of money, but for the lack of knowledge. So say, Jesus is my source. Jesus is my source. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is who he says he is. And God is my provider. Amen. Amen. Now, we need to understand that prosperity is part of redemption. In Galatians 3.13, says, Jesus was made a curse for us. A curse means anything sin produces. Sin produces three things, death, sickness and disease, and poverty. I have been redeemed from all three. I've been redeemed. In other words, redeemed means I've been repurchased, rebought back and set free from sickness, disease, and poverty and death. Thank God for that tonight. Amen. The subject of prosperity is as important to your redemption as the forgiveness of sin because Jesus paid for it at the exact same time. Exact, the exact same time. When Jesus went to the cross, not only did he suffer and die for your sins, but also for your prosperity. He killed poverty at the cross. He killed lack at the cross. He took care of sickness and disease at the cross. He took care of death at the cross. You said, well, pastor, people are still dying. Yes, but death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. Yes. The sting of death, thank God, he takes away the sting of death for a child of God. Thank God we have victory. We're not, we're not defeated when we die in this earth. Amen. When this natural body lays out, we're not defeated because we're just being transported out of this body into the glorious kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Amen, hallelujah. So we win either way. Matter of fact, we become more winners when we get transformed out of this life. Amen? Now, the subject of prosperity, as I said, is just as important to your redemption as the forgiveness of sin because Jesus paid for it at the exact same time at the cross. How can you stay in poverty if it is caused by sin? Yet Jesus eradicated, ripe out sin. How can you stay in poverty if it's caused by sin? Yet Jesus eradicated, wiped out your sin. Prosperity is not only a privilege, but it also is a responsibility. A responsibility. If you die without Jesus, Jesus died in vain for you. You know that, don't you? I mean, everything he did, all he went through, and if you die without receiving Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he died in vain. In the same way, if you don't allow healing to take place in your body, then Jesus took sickness and disease for you in vain. He took it for you in vain. So we need to find out and understand that he became a curse and he cursed sickness, disease, and poverty and death. Amen. Now, if you don't allow God to do what he wants to in your finances, then Jesus was also an empty sacrifice. He was an empty sacrifice if you don't allow Jesus to do what he wants to in your finances. If he was made poor so that you might become rich, he did it all in vain, but Jesus already paid the price because prosperity is a part of your redemption. You cannot separate that. You can't separate poverty from sin or been set free from sin and poverty and disease. All works in the same place, same vein on the cross. Because prosperity is part of redemption. Your desire to prosper is not rooted in vanity, but it is rooted in redemption and inspired by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. If salvation, listen to me, if salvation comes by a decision and, ha and, and having faith to be healed comes through a decision, then prosperity also comes by the way of a decision. 
I'm making a decision to walk in God's best. I make a decision to walk in prosperity. I make a decision to walk victorious in this life in which we now live. I made a decision, I'm going to prosper. I'm, I'm going to prosper, why? Because I'm going to be obedient to the word of God. Amen. Amen. We find in Malachi, we've read that several times, that if a man, were, if, will a man rob God? You say, where will a man rob God? Rob him in tithes and in offerings. So I'm not going to rob God. I'm going to give him my tithes. I'm going to give him my offerings. I don't have any problem giving to God. Do you believe there's a God? Do you believe God is who he says he is? So why would we even question being obedient to El Shaddai? Don't even question that tonight. Glory to God. Just submit yourself to the word of God. Submit yourself to God's word. Amen. See, uh, he said, my God shall supply. Now circle the word supply there in Philippians 4.19. It's very important that you understand. Supply. The supply that God has provided for our lives is already on the earth. It's already on the earth. Everything we need is already on the earth. We are not trying to get God to send down supplies from heaven. Amen. Lord, send us a wagon train full of supplies from heaven. We're not looking to that. We look to Genesis chapter one. If you read Genesis, if you just read the book, Amen. just get excited about reading the book. Amen. Genesis chapter one, it says that God spent the first chapter here, first, most of the chapter, first 25 verses, creating everything. Amen. Creating everything. And God said, and God said, and God said, and God saw. Amen. Amen. And, and he talks about, and then he gave man dominion over everything. He gave man authority. We have authority over everything in this life. Amen. Glory to God. We get on over there in chapter two, we find out that uh, there's four rivers and down those rivers, uh, one of them has gold. And God told Adam, God, Adam, there's gold down that river there. Now see, uh, this, uh, this is my thinking was, he, he knew that, you know, he was going to create a woman for Adam and that uh, women like gold. So he told Adam, said, Adam, there's gold down this particular river here. Go down there and get you some gold, because he should be wanting a gold ring, a gold <laughs> necklace, right. gold bracelet. Amen. 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 She wants a little bling. <laughs> and some guys like gold. I like gold. Every guy likes gold. Amen. Uh, so God, he put everything in the earth. He supplied everything man needed. In the garden, he supplied, a gar he, he supplied uh, uh, trees and, and, and he supplied food. He, everything man needed, God supplied for it. Amen? See, what we need to do is quit looking at our need and, so, and, keep, and look at the supply. See, we go through things in life. We all go through things sometimes and, and, and challenges in certain areas. But we need to understand that God has a supply already intact for you and I. Yes. He's not going to supply your needs when you have a need. Your need has already been supplied before you have a need. Amen. 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 Get a hold of that now. See, when we get a need, we're trying to get our needs met. But see, as long as we're trying to get our needs met, we fail to recognize the truth of God's word. My God shall supply the supply comes before the need. Amen. 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 And when God created the earth and everything in it, he supplied everything for Adam. And then Adam fell, but he didn't stop supplying. Amen. 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 Aren't you thankful this morning? I mean, tonight. Amen. God fully supplied the earth before he placed man here. By doing this, he shows us that he provided the supply before man ever faced a need. Before man ever faced a need, he had the supply. We must always remember this, that every need we face already has been supplied. Every need. We must just release our faith to receive that supply and allow the supply to annihilate the need. <laughs> Let the supply take care of the need. Amen. Praise God. We have a little pantry in our house and there's things that we buy, and we just don't buy it for that particular week. Sometimes we buy things for maybe 
uh, two or three weeks or some canned goods that we like. We may buy several cans there. So when we run out of one can of something we like, we got a supply. I don't run out of this one can and pray, Lord, get, Lord God, I need, I, need, I need my supply replenished. No, our, that's what been taken care of. Amen. Amen. God already took care of your need. Because, I mean, he, he don't only have a pantry. He's got a whole earth. Amen. 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 I said amen. amen. We are to allow God the Father, which tells us in Philippians 4.19, to renew our thinking. We've got to get our thinking renewed because my God shall supply all of our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The emphasis in the minds of many believers today is how great their needs are. Always thinking about how big their needs are, but God wants this verse to give us his, he gives us the, the verse here, my God shall supply all his our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. The emphasis in the minds of many believers is how great their needs are, as I said, but God wants this verse to give us his emphasis, which is how great God's supply for our lives is. No longer are we to be need conscious. Stop being need conscious, but we are to be supply conscious. Mm. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, I'm supply conscious. See, the supply was provided before there was ever a need. I like that. See, see, for years, I didn't know that. I didn't really get a revelation understanding that. And, and when I had a need, I was trying to get my needs met. Instead of realizing, hey, you know, the Bible says in Mark 11, 23, you have what you say if you believe in your heart, you have what you say. So when, when, when I see the need approaching, I already speak out, my supply has already been met for this need. Amen. I'm not trying to get my needs met. I know and understand God's word to this point in my life that my needs are already met. Amen. See, when you tell people you have no needs, they said they don't understand that. Because it seems like when you talk to everybody, friends you know, friends, family, whatever, people in general, everybody's got a need. Everybody needs some, And then you'll have some people, good Christian people say, everybody has a need. But see, if we, grab, if we gravitate to that thought, then we, we negate what God's word says, that my needs are already been supplied. Amen. So I'm not going to let someone change my thinking or my saying because somebody else thinks I still have a need. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You've heard me teach over the years, you that's been here for a while. You don't give somebody money because they have a need. Amen. What you're doing, you're sowing into that life because God's trying to get the supply to you. Amen. Come on. Amen. Hear what I said? And then see, a lot of times people say, well, they don't have no needs and yet I feel like I need to give this person a gift. Uh, then you rob yourself by disobeying because you're looking at all their needs already met. But see, God's trying to get a supply to you. Hmm? <laughs> Over the years, we've, we've written checks to people uh, that, that we know that didn't need, actually need the money. But see, what was happening, I didn't realize at the time, uh, many years ago, I didn't realize at the time that I was uh, opening up my supply house. Amen. So my supply would just flow into my life. Amen. 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 And, and because we've always been such givers, we just love to, we just love to give, Amen. be a blessing to people, just love to be a blessing. But we, we, at the time, we didn't realize it, but then when we got a hold of it, my God, it really began to open up supplies. Supplies just, I mean, we just got, I mean, we don't have a, 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 a wagon train full of supplies. We don't have a train with 25 boxcars full of supplies. We got a whole earth. The whole earth has been given to you and I. Satan now is on the earth roaming to and fro, but see, he, he has no authority because we find in Genesis 1.26, we have dominion. Right. 
See, what happened was, listen to me, stay with me. See, when God made man, he gave dominion before he made man. Isn't that what the Bible says? He, he, before he made man, he had a supply. He built the earth, put everything in it like he wanted it. The fish, I like fish. Amen. He put everything in, all the animals, everything on the earth. Praise God. Then he says, I'll give you authority. I'll give you dominion. So Adam had his supply met before he was even created in the natural. See, because, see, we didn't come, we just didn't exist when we were born from our mother's womb on the earth. We were born, created by God when God was. We were before the found. We were. We find if he's before the foundation of the world, you and I are before the foundation of the world. So what we actually came from, we came out of the bosom of God, which is not in poverty. We came out of a rich man's home. You might have been born in a home that was not rich in the natural, but once you get born again and get the revelation, it's a sad thing to know today that people have a will they never read and understand. See, some people have a will, they have to get a lawyer, have to hire a lawyer to tell them what's in it. God give pastors, ministers of the gospel, revelation to explain to you what's in this word and encourage you also to get in the word for yourself and God will give you that same revelation. Amen. 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 So I, I didn't come, my, 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 my daddy, God, I came from his house. Amen. And I don't think he wants anybody living beneath himself. Before the foundation was, I was. He gave me, listen, before I was born into my mother's womb, by the seed of my dad, the seed that was planted, I had already had dominion to conquer life before I was even born in the natural because I was already existed before that time. Amen. I like what Isaac said. He, he preached a little bit about coming out of God, and he also said this, he said, people talking about, uh, you know, abortion, that a baby is not really a baby when it's in his mother's womb. But see, we were a baby before we went into the womb. Amen. So when you take a baby, you're taking the life of God. You're taking God's child, what you're taking. Yeah. And but the world has made it so acceptable and Christians today are just hooking right up with it. Huh? See, if we're gonna flow in every area of our life away from lack of anything, we gotta understand the whole gospel. It's the gospel that we know that makes us free. I want to know the whole gospel. The whole gospel, the truth of God's word. And so I didn't mean to get all that tonight, but anyway, make a long story short, God's a good God. And we were before the foundation of the world. So I was born a wealthy man. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, Pastor, you're getting way out there now, way out there. Just read your Bible. Just read your Bible. The supply, what I'm doing, the whole subject of the matter is, the supply was taken care of before the need. Amen. 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 I said the supply was taken care of before the need. Say, my God Amen. shall supply Amen. all my needs Amen. according to his riches Amen. in glory Amen. by Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, some of the issues that we have in life and the reason we don't really uh, get to the blessings of God quicker is because we linger too long in the need. I said we linger too long in the lead, need. Now when the Hebrews were set free from Egypt, they went across the Red Sea. Then when they crossed that Red Sea, they had all the gold, all the silver, not one sick, not one feeble among them. Every need was met. 
I mean, when they left Egypt, they left healthy. Amen. They left healthy. And see, because of disobedience, after they crossed the Red Sea, because of disobedience, they traveled around and lingered around the mountain for 40 years. 40 years. But God loved them so much, he never let their shoes wear out or their clothes wear out. He supernaturally fed them. Even though they had all the gold, all the silver, all the linen, fine linen, Egypt could offer everything. But see, none of that was any good. God says the only way you're going to make it is if I supply. Amen. See, you can have all the gold and everything you want in this life, but it may not be no good. Amen. Amen. Because God is my source. Amen. See, God led them uh, God led them through the wilderness for 40 years. And they lingered there too long. They didn't have to, it's only an 11-day journey. 11-day journey. There are people that are still struggling with, with tithing. Amen. And they're struggling with giving. And they're lingering in their area in the same thing. They're the same thing over and over again. They're lingering. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Lingering, see. Amen. They're lingering in, in their situations, and they're lingering by, you know, they're tied one week, one week. They don't. You can't tithe one week and one week you don't. That's not tithing. That's right. You're giving, but it ain't tithing. Amen. 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 I don't want to just linger around the mountain for 40 years. I, I want to move on. How about you? See, there are places of need we face in life that we should just pass through. But if we don't exercise our faith when we face that need, we will linger in a place of need too long. In referring to the Hebrew children, lingered for 40 years. We find in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 2, For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them because it was not mixed with faith in them that heard it. Notice that the word didn't profit them. Why? Because it did not profit them because they didn't mix faith with the word that was preached to them. You got to mix some faith with what you hear. The word of God is to help and answer in the face of every need. But if faith isn't mixed with that word, you won't profit from it. When faith is added to the word, it works every single time. But without your faith mixed in with the word, it will not work. It won't profit you. There's no benefits in it. Amen. Without faith, we find in Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So see, the, it says again in Hebrews 4, 2, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, the same gospel, but the word preached to them didn't profit them. Why? Because they didn't mix faith with it. You see wonderful Christians today, they struggle, they struggle. Why? Because they're still looking at the need and they're not mixing faith with it. Faith is mixing it with the supply that's already been supplied for you. Glory to God. Amen. Faith is an act. I said faith is an act. Now, you might say, well, Pastor, how do you mix faith with the Word? Your tongue is the mixer that mixes your faith with the Word of God. Amen. Amen. You don't get in life what you believe. It's not enough to just believe because in Mark eleven twenty three 23, it says, you shall have what you say. Jesus didn't say that you'll have what you believe. He didn't say that. But he did say that you have what you say. The Bible tells us that the demons believe and they tremble. Amen. It's not just believing that receives from God, but you must say what you believe to activate your faith. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a shame to have an activator in you and not use the activator, which is faith. Amen. Romans 12, 3 says, it's been given to every man a measure of faith. Now we know also in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now this verse tells us how faith comes by what? Hearing the word. Although faith comes by hearing, faith doesn't operate by hearing. Faith doesn't operate by hearing. How does faith operate? Or how is faith released? By speaking, speaking what God's word says. Saying what God's word says. 
I was ministering to a young lady the other day at the bank and got ministering to her. And uh, she came out and later on, after I got through the transition, transaction there and came around, I ministered to her there for a while. And, and I began to share some things along these same lines that you've got to activate your situation with faith. You've got to say something out loud and say, but I wouldn't say you have what you think. Amen. She went, <laughs> she said, is that right? I said, you can't have what you think. You've got to say something. You've got to say that loud where you can hear it. Amen. Amen. You must believe, but you must also speak. You must also speak. Romans 10, 10 says, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. God is letting us know that faith must be in two places, in your heart and in your mouth. When you hear the word, you believe. When you speak the word, you receive that word. The supply God has provided for you for your life will not flow automatically. It just don't happen automatically. It just don't happen automatically. You must mix faith in it with the word. You gotta mix faith in it with the word. You gotta mix it together. Now, you know, if you bake a cake and somebody do really awesome jobs, ones that I've tried, <laughs> really, really good. But if you left the sugar out, it wouldn't be much of a cake. You got all the ingredients, but there's an agreement. See, Christians got a lot of ingredients, but they leave out one thing and that's mixing faith with it. Amen. You make a cake, it could be beautiful. I mean, it's be gorgeous. Then you take a bite out of it. <laughs> What's wrong with this thing? You got no sugar in it. Why don't you put some sugar in it? <laughs> it don't work without sugar. Amen. Amen. <laughs> See, when you mix your words of faith with God's word, then the word starts moving and annihilating the deed which God supplies. Amen. God is my supplier. We don't want to linger in a need. Don't linger in that need. I don't know what I'm going to do about the need. I've got a big need. I don't know what I'm going to do. I've got this big need. I've got this big need. You're lingering in that need. You're walking around that mountain, just like the Hebrew kids did. Walking around that mountain. You're lingering around that need. Amen. Don't linger with that need. So we are to diligently mix our faith in with God's word to move into the supply that God has for us. God's got an awesome supply. Awesome supply. My, my, my. I mean, it is awesome. He, he, he just, I mean, he's just so incredible with his supply. He leaves nothing undone. Every need, he says, my God shall supply every. Nothing's left undone. Every need. Hallelujah. Lord, I said every need, praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Yeah. It matters not what your need may be. He has supply for it. Amen. He has a supply for it, praise God. Hallelujah. Glory amen. to God, amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. Suppose you had a room in your house that you could walk into and get anything you need out of that room. It don't matter what you need. It just, I mean, just, I mean, you walk in and say, I need this. It just, boom, there it was. Whew, like a, a genie in a lamp. Rub the lamp, there comes a genie out of it. What do you want? Any wish. But see, God's not a lantern. He's not a genie. He's El Shaddai. We don't have to rub the Bible. We just need to act on the word. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'll be there. Oh, please, God. <laughs> Lord, if you don't show up, I don't know how to meet my need. That's, that's what you're actually doing. You're in a wishful prayer. You're wishing for something to happen, really. You're actually in a wishing mode instead of the faith mode. You'll never get what you need without faith. And it's impossible, as I said, to please God without faith. Amen. God just doesn't start preparing a supply for you at the time you need appears. It's already been done in advance. He provided you uh, all your needs years ago before the, in the very beginning in Genesis, go all the way back to Genesis chapter one. That's the needs of the natural, but he, we can go all the way back to heaven for in the beginning was the word. 
And the Word was with God, and God was the Word, John 1, 1 said. So in the beginning was the Word. We can also say this, in the beginning I was with God with the Word. In the beginning, we were before the foundation of the world. Now, I know this goes a little, this is a Wednesday night. This is a deep bunch. We're not here to feed you uh, cereal tonight. Amen. Steak with a bone in it because it's more tender that way for some reason. I like steak. Amen. See, we find in, in, in Corinthians, Paul says this, uh, Christians are still, uh, Paul says, I can't, I can't feed you anymore uh, because you're still babies and all you want is milk. Amen. We got to get away from the milk crowd. Amen. We got to quit wanting milk all the time. We got to get into the meat category. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, God, God will supply whatever you need. If you want milk, he'll give that to you. If you want steak, he'll give that to you. Whatever you want. You have what you say. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4 verse 3 says, in the Amplified tells us, his works have been completed, listen to me, and prepared and waiting for all who would believe from the foundation of the world. Whew. Glory to God. God, what he's doing here, he's letting us know that he completed and prepared the supply for every need you face in this life. Hebrews 4.3 tells us that all, tells us that all that God has completed and prepared for us is waiting for all who will believe and say. God supplied for your life in waiting for your faith. That's the only thing... That's the only thing that's holding back your supply is your faith. Amen. Amen. So start releasing your faith in God's supply by calling the supply to come into your life. It is waiting for you now. The supply is waiting for you now. You've got to call that supply in by faith. My needs are met. Amen. My needs are met. I'm not trying to get my needs met. God, my needs are met. Praise God. I said, my needs are met. See, the devil may try to accuse you by saying, by saying that if you have need, it's because your faith isn't working. Just by being alive, needs are going to rise in your life. So don't let the devil accuse you of not having faith just because a need rises in your life. To have a need is not a negative thing. Listen to me. Jesus faced needs time and time again throughout his whole earthly ministry, but we never saw him in lack. Amen. Never saw him in lack. He always received the supply for every need that he had. Oh, the God. Woo, boy, I'm getting happy, 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 happy up here. When you think about how good God is, when you think about his goodness, when you think about his goodness, when you think about his supply, everything, every time Jesus had a need, he had a supply for it. Amen. He told people, let's go down to the beach. There's a fish under that's got tax money. Now see, Jesus didn't really have to go down and get a corner out of the fish's mouth. Because go back when he was two years old, didn't he have all these merchants come to him, the wise men come to him? Caravans of 50 to 100, bring him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Jesus was a boy off the man. You know what I believe he was teaching Peter here? He said, Peter, I'm leaving you one day, but I'll still supply for you. So I'm going to show you up front what I'm doing for you. This is, this is how you, you just believe. Just believe and say, it shall come to pass. <laughs> Ooh, give me a shout on your Wednesday night. See, just because you face needs don't mean that you have lack or have a lack of faith. Paul stated in Philippians 4.12, the Amplified Bible says this, I know how to abase and live humbly in straightened circumstances, and I know also how to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. In other words, Paul said, 
He said, I have a need, I face needs, but God is my supply. He faces them knowing that God has already provided a supply for every need he would face in this life. He didn't see a need as a negative thing, but he knew he had a supply and to exercise it by faith to bring in his supply. Hallelujah. Bring your faith in God's supply to every need and no need will ever be negative in your life. Hallelujah. I said no need would ever be negative in your life because you're not looking at the, the need. You're not looking at the lack. You're looking at the supply. Yes. I got the supply here. I know I got a need, but I got the supply to take care of the need. Hallelujah. Are you getting this? Yes. Is this okay? Yes. I said I've got the supply here. And, and the need will show up. Every one of us at one time or another will have a need, but don't forget your supply. Don't, don't sit down and scratch your head and say, how am I going to get that need met? I mean, that's just, they just popped up out of the blue. All of a sudden, I've got a tremendous need. What am I going to do now? Go to the supply. What is the supply? The Word of God. Mix faith with it. Mix faith with it. Mix faith with the word. See, the word is powerful and sharper, but you got to mix some faith with that. Amen. Mix some faith. I said, mix some faith with that. Amen. See, when we understand how far-reaching God's supply for our life, life really is, then we can do that what James says. James instructs us in James 1, 2, brethren, count it all joy. Count it all joy when you fall into different kinds of tests and trials. The test and trial isn't a joy, but we are to count it a joy. It's not a joy. We count it a joy. Why? Because joy is my supply for the test. Joy is a supply <laughs> for the test. I got a test, but I got a supply. Oh, joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. Amen. Knowing that God is not the one that sends a test and trial, but God has pro provided every single thing you need to face that test. He says, count it joy. We count it a joy for the opportunity to stand on God's word, express our faith, and receive our supply because God is more than enough. God's bigger than our need. God is my supply. And my God shall supply. My God shall supply. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So then he says, just <clears throat> count it. Somebody say, I'm going to count it joy. Stand up with me. Stand up with me. Start praising God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and give him some joy. Go ahead and give him some joy. Hallelujah. You going through something, just shout, praise God. Just glorify him. Get happy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Father. <laughs> oh. Well, glory. Just get happy. I count myself happy because I am supplied with so much joy. See, you're full of joy because God has supplied you with his joy. You're not really just rejoicing in you, in your own human joy. See, human joy just will come and go. But the joy of the Lord is our strength. And the joy of the Lord will always be there with you. He, wait, 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 wait. Woo, woo. Amen. 
He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. In other words, he said, I'll never let you not have a supply. I'll never let you be unhappy. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll never let you be sick. I'll never let you get poor. I'll never let you fail. Hallelujah. See, we're not, we're not, we're not scratching our heads trying to figure out where we're coming from here tonight. What we're doing, we're getting a revelation of the God of the supplier. See, in Philippians 4, 19, we quoted it so many times over the years, we didn't really stop long enough to teach on it properly like we should. My God. My God, which is the word of God, speaking to me. My God, through the word of God, I'm mixing faith with what I read, mixing faith with the word of God. My God shall supply all my needs. That's why I get happy when I don't feel like being happy. Because see, as long as you try to operate out of your own happiness, then your supply will run out. Don't let me come down there. See, God's supply will never run out. But if everything we do in life is from our own energy, then we run out. That tells me that if I sow seed, you reap what you sow. In other words, you reap what you sow. What God said is, my supply is to take care of what you sowed. And whatever you sow, there's more supply than really what you sowed. I need to give another offering right here. I need to give another offering right here. There's only one reason why you wouldn't rejoice, and that is if you don't believe that there is supply for every need. Paul was in prison in several of those books he wrote, pretty much all of them. But in Philippi, in Philippi, you know, Paul had a revelation. It's no longer I that lives, but it's Christ that lives in me. The life that I now live, I live by faith. It's the Son of God who gave me. Oh, glory. <laughs> Paul says in Philippians 16 times while he was in prison writing the book of Philippians, I'm just going to get happy. I'm trying my best to close here. I, I'm trying my best to close. But he, but he, he Well, one more, one more, hold it, hold it, one more, one more, and I'll let you go, one more, one more. In Acts, the 16th chapter, Paul and Silas were thrown in prison into a dungeon. It was dark. There were no pool tables, no plasma TVs, no air conditions, no chefs. Dark dungeon. Rats as big as cats. If you don't think they, if you don't think they get that big, go to New York. <laughs> Paul and Silas had a need, but they had a supply bigger than the need. They, they had a need to be released. They had a need to take care of their wounds when they had been beaten, but their supply took over when they began to rejoice. Well, well, when that, <laughs> I'm glad Pastor Barbara prayed for me. She prayed for me now. She said, give a strong anointing on me. I've got an anointing, but I like it to increase. She said, she said bless him and increase him.
I like a woman like that. All right, listen, we got to go home. We love you so much. You're born again. You know you're born again. Say, thank God I'm saved. Thank God I'm saved. By, the By the blood of the Lamb. Take your hand down. God has already supplied a place in heaven for us. And he also supplied a place in heaven for every sinner, for every backslider. But all they have to do to enjoy the supply of heaven in the life to come is to give their heart to Jesus. Is anyone here have not been saved or you need to rededicate your life? Are you watching online right now? God can be your supply. If you'll give your life to him, he made it so easy. God the Father supplied Jesus to give you life and to give it more abundantly. Pray this prayer. Say, Father, I believe in my heart. Jesus died for me on the third day. He arose from the grave. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth. I'm a child of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, praise you tonight. God bless you. We love you. Have a great week. See you Sunday morning. Praise the Lord.